Hi, Steve here in the Down to Earth Woodworking Shop. Today we're going to start cleaning up this rough cut cherry, getting it ready to glue up for the leg stock for my upcoming desk project. So let's take a look at one method of doing that. This is a board that I just finished. It's a little bit smoother. You can see that uh, the board had a little bit of a concave shape, so as I was planing it, the edges here were starting to get better. The center is still a little rough, but it's good enough for my next step, and I'll show you what that is in a couple of minutes. This is a fully rough board. You can see some of the milling marks in it. You can see some, uh, some paint on it here. You can see some marker over here. Just out of the picture over here, there's a knot. Uh, I'm going to work around those things, and I'm going to smooth this down a little bit. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I've opened up the mouth. And I've got a pretty aggressive cut set here, so let's take a look at how this is going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plane across this at an angle, uh, maybe a 45 or a little bit less. Can't see much happening, can you? That's because all I'm doing is taking off the very top pieces right now, even though I'm taking a fairly aggressive cut, it's not taking a curl, it's taking dust right now. So let's look at this again. Okay, now just the second time over that, starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a curl here and a little bit less dust, so we can tell it's cutting a little bit deeper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go the whole length of the board with overlapping strokes. Planing is fun and it can be a pretty good workout too. Okay, I've gone over it about three times now with uh, angled strokes and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the board around. Working on the same face Got is this board is pushed up against some stops on my bench. That's plenty to keep this heavy board from moving. So now we're going to go over it and these angles are going to overlap. You may not be able to tell it on the video, but you're, I'm starting to be able to see a little mark here each time I'm going across with the plane because I'm starting to shave off enough of the wood now that it's removing some of the discoloration. Another couple of times this way, and I'm going to turn the board back around. One way to tell when you're starting to get down to, you're taking a full cut, is it's going to get harder to push the plane. Once you start to get these fuller cuts, it's time to start to increase the angle across the board so that we're taking more of a shearing cut. Looks like I really didn't need to take that trip to the gym this morning. One more pass and it should be just about good enough for, uh, for the next step. And again, not perfect, but better, and I can clearly see a pencil mark on this board. Now, I only need to do this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more times. So, I'm going to get to work, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Oh, I didn't know the camera was on. I decided to take a little bit more aggressive cuts, so... I'm putting some muscle into this. See, I wanted it to look more fun in the video and less like work. Okay, after doing some initial planing, the next step for me at least is to mark out any trouble areas that I find on the boards. I've already marked those out. I've found some checking in the ends I'm going to cut off. I've got a big knot down here I need to get around. I found this little knot here. I didn't even see it before I planed the board, so I want to make sure I get rid of that. Kind of got a little bad section of wood down here. It may get gone anyway with the, uh, with the uh, cut off at the end. 
And uh, now I'm going to start marking out a center line so that I can rip these boards. I'm going to rip them on the bandsaw. Um, if you read my articles, you know I'm going to do this whole project without a table saw. Okay, I'm ready to uh, rip these boards right now. Let me just show you. I, uh, I put a little zigzaggy chalk line on here only because I want to remember in a little while what the, uh, the two matching faces are on these boards. I drew a line down the center and I'm just going to freehand rip this. I'm not going to use the fence with the wood slicer blade from Highland and with a well set up saw it's pretty easy just to follow the line and get a good clean rip. So let's go. Okay, so the method to the madness here is, is I uh, planed a little bit off the surface so I could see the grain structure. I marked one face and I ripped it down the middle. Now once I finish planing, get everything nice and flat, I will then flip this over on top of the other board where these two faces are, are uh, meeting. And what that will do is it will give me a beautiful, almost a book matched grain pattern here for the face of my legs. At least that's the plan. Well, no doubt with all that planing and ripping those boards in half, we probably relieved a whole lot of internal stresses in those boards. So I've got them sitting off to the side, stacked up, and I'm going to let them relax overnight. It's going to let me relax too because uh, I might have relieved some of my internal stresses with all that planing. We'll get started again tomorrow. Right now I'm going to clean up the shop, clean up my plane, resharpen the blade, be ready to go.